we usually do this in person and it would be much better to see you in person but this is the next best thing because we really think what we have in our simulation lab is very special so i'm very excited to share what we've been doing in simulation for our nursing students so let me start here hopefully my screen share works there we go okay um so i want to start by saying that um there we go we have a simulation in both the undergraduate program and the graduate program um, our undergraduate program uh, for simulation is very strong we have a very robust program and we continue to expand on it so now i'm going to actually show you some of the simulation rooms so we have different rooms devoted to different types of patients across the continuum of care so we have an adult room or a sim bay as it's called and we have our adult patients in these rooms so the pictures that I'm going to show you here were taken at our simulation lab. We have three of them. This one in particular is taken at the Sim Lab at our Health Sciences campus in Maywood. But we also have a simulation lab at our Lakeshore campus in Rogers Park. And our newest site is in Downers Grove. And that's where our hybrid accelerated BSN students uh, have their simulation. So you can see though that all our simulation rooms have the same equipment. Um, you can see the monitor above the patient's bed. You can see the headboard um, is simulated. So we don't actually have suction or oxygen there, but it, the dials work and the equipment is real. Um, you can see the IV, the blood pressure cuff, um, and so all of that is in all of our adult rooms. Now, in our simulation bay that I just showed you, adjacent to that is a control room. And this is where all the action takes place behind the scenes. So we can see in as faculty and simulation operations specialists into the simulation bay but the students when they're in the simulation bay they only see a um, it's a window but it's a mirror so we can see them but they can't see us and you can see that in the control room we have our scripts for reference we have um, all of the computers and monitors to change the vital signs of the patient the breath sounds um, we can control the monitor in the room and the faculty act as the voice of the patient so you can see the microphone there the students talk to the patient and the patient answers but it's actually the faculty and the faculty are the voice of the patient because the faculty know the objectives of the scenario so the faculty can cue the students if they're getting off track as to what the students should be doing I mentioned about the debriefing room and debriefing is our where we have our reflective practice. So adjacent to the control room in the sim bay is the debriefing room and this is where a lot of the learning takes place and even in the research literature related to simulation it's it's clear that debriefing is where the meat of the education takes place if you will because it's reflecting and talking about why did you do what you did oh help me understand why you did that um, and then students talk about their thought process and that's where faculty can um, alleviate um, situations where students have misunderstandings or misconceptions and that's how they will learn and here's sim mom so I told you that in OB many of our students didn't have an opportunity to see a real birth so here's sim mom and she gives birth and poor sim mom then she has a postpartum hemorrhage um, but then the students 
They start out with one patient with Simmom, and then they have to prioritize because now they have two patients. They have little baby Danielle. And then little baby Danielle becomes hypoglycemic. So now they have to prioritize care for the mom and care for the baby. So uh, the students have their OB simulation um, and OB later in their curriculum. Um, and this really tests their ability to prioritize care and practice clinical judgment. Now this is one of our pediatric rooms, and many of you may have heard of one of the latest trends, and that is an escape room. And this, a lot of people do this for fun, and so we thought we'd try it in simulation. And the students loved it. This was our first attempt at uh, an escape room. And so that's our patient there who is an adolescent who has sickle cell disease. And there were clues all over the room on how to care for the patient. And the students had to put the clues together in order to provide the best care for the patient. And that's how they were able to escape by providing that excellent nursing care. So this was our first attempt at an escape room. Um, we've got another one in the works related to a patient who has sepsis. Um, so stay tuned. This is another piece of uh, equipment that we have in our simulation lab at all three of our sites. This is the Pixis medication dispensing machine. And I'm sure if you are a practicing nurse, you're familiar with this. The problem with our nursing students and using the Pixis machine is that most hospitals will not let our students use the Pixis because there's narcotics in there. So what was happening is that when the students graduated, many of the facilities just expected that our students would know how to use the Pixis machine, but in fact, they never had an opportunity to do so during clinical. So we were fortunate enough to be able to purchase a Pixis machine on, uh, for each of our three sites and our three sim labs. And now we start with our fundamentals course. And when the students learn about medication administration, we have all of our patients are programmed into the Pixis machine and from their fundamentals course all the way up to their multiple patient simulation, the medications have to be obtained from the Pixis machine. So they get two and a half years of practice using the Pixis machine. And we're very excited that we have just introduced, rolled out our electronic health record. And we're very proud of the fact that our electric, electronic health record was created by one of our DNP students, our Doctorate of Nursing Practice students, for her capstone project. And it was amazing in that it really mimics a real electronic health record used in the hospital. And what is of advantage um, for our students and for us is that we can load all of our patients in, we can customize um, our health records for all of our patients, we can make changes on the fly if we want to, um, and it looks like a real health record. One of our simulation operation specialists who's really tech savvy has even expanded further on the electronic health record. So we now have an electronic health record for all of our patients throughout the curriculum, and that's about almost 30 patients that the students take care of. And all of our patients are in the electronic health record. So the students document in the EHR, they have to check the lab values, they have to uh, read the orders, they look at the medication administration record. So everything now is electronic, and that's just how it is in real life. And this is our multi-patient sim. I talked to you about this already. Um, the only thing that I want to add to this 
Um, in order to help prepare our students for transition to practice, we try to make this as real as possible and bring in a lot of the concepts that they've had in their theory courses previously, but not necessarily in their simulations, or perhaps not had an opportunity to participate during their, their clinicals. Um, in, an, in an effort to make this even more real, for about the last year and a half now, we've hired actors to play the role of the patient. We used to have students play the role of the patient, but you know, when the students are taking care of their friends, their classmates, it doesn't always really go as well. But with the standardized patients, as they're called, these actors, they're given a script and they have to assume the role of this patient. And then what's very valuable is the standardized patient, this actor gives feedback to the students after the simulation and really um, makes the students think twice about the care they provided because their number one standardized patient said to the student, well, why didn't you just ask me that question? I would have, I would have answered it. And the student said, oh, I didn't think that I should ask you that. And the patient said, why not? You need to know that information. Don't be afraid to ask your patients questions. So it was a great experience for the students. So we're really excited to be able to provide actors for the students in this simulation. And there's um, our students at work, again, in our multi-patient sim. And then um, here's another little break where we have three other um, scenarios for you. One um, to show that we were able to demonstrate to the students the lab reports on the screen virtually. Um, we've talked about vital signs and how the vital signs can come up on the monitor as well as lung sounds and blood sugar. So I'm going to turn it over again to Erin to show the videos. Um, see those labs are back. All right. Let me get my sheet here to see if there's any. Let's see what a CDC looks like. So his white column, it looks like his WBCs are 13.5. Those are a little elevated. Um, his hemoglobin, 13.5, pretty good. Hematocrit with a normal, 41.2. And his platelets are normal. Give me a set of vital signs as like heart rate, blood pressure, respiratory temperature, and oxygen saturation. And I'm going to have uh, Nancy get your vital signs here. And so I'm going to take a look here where you're having Kenya. If you had to rate it, zero being no pain, ten being the worst, what number would you give? Oh, probably about a four or five, but I'm just afraid that it's going to get worse. Okay, so I just want to take a peek here. I want to take a look at your dressing here, make sure. So is this where you're feeling the pain, right around the incision? Yeah, yeah, right where they cut the open. Okay, well your incision looks great, it's dry and intact, and well, the doll looks really super good. Well, that's good to hear. I'm going to set you up just a bit here, and I'm going to take a listen to your lungs. Right. And I want you to take some nice deep breaths in for me through an open mouth. Okay. Okay, I'm going to hop up underneath here with my stethoscope. Take a listen down here. Okay. And a nice deep breath through an open mouth. Well, I'm just going to check your um, blood sugar. You've had this done before, I know. Yeah. This is cold. This is the alcohol. Okay. Okay, while I'm underneath here, I'm going to take a listen to your heart. Okay, you feel the prick. Okay, and I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure there. See if it pulls the radio. It's regular. Yeah, it's regular. And here's an example of in-class simulation. So this is a med surge class where the students are given a scenario, and this is an oncology patient who comes to the clinic and asks questions of the nurses about his lab work. He doesn't understand the lab work. 
So the students have to collaborate and figure out how they're going to answer the patient's questions. Um, SOS stands for timeout, and it's students offering support to each other. And so that freezes the simulation so they can collaborate. And then they put their sign down, and then they can go back and start to talk to the patient again. So this is just one example of how we have incorporated simulation into the classroom. I have to say that this has been fantastic. Um, I know when we do things like this that it's not the, you know, the technology is not perfect, but I feel like there was just so much good information that was shared. And I have to say that Dr. Kostovich did a wonderful job. I feel like she really imparts um, her personality and her caring spirit um, and, and can really um, show us the kind of ways that Loyola students are being, are being educated, which I very much appreciate.